Welcome to the video help with physics problems for physics 1A. In this video we'll be covering homework set 5 part 4. That's the second half of the questions under the heading oscillations. So for 1121 students that's questions 11 to 13 and for 1131 students that's questions 13 to 17. Problem 11 for 1121 or 13 for 1131. In this problem we have a block with mass capital M attached to a spring and hence to a wall. The spring constant the spring has a spring constant K. A bullet with mass little m is fired at the block with a speed v. We're asked to come up with an expression for the amplitude of the resulting simple harmonic motion in terms of these four constants. Okay, so when it's undergoing simple harmonic motion, the displacement will equal the amplitude when the total energy is all equal to the potential energy. So when there's no kinetic energy, when all the energy is stored in the spring. So if we know the total energy, then this is equal to a half Ka squared. And we've got K there, and this will allow us to find A. So what we need to do is find out the total energy of this system. Now we can assume that when the bullet hits the block and gives it momentum, that's at that point in time it's going to have its maximum velocity. And so all its energy then is going to be in the form of kinetic energy. And so the total energy will be the kinetic energy at that point in time. So if we can work out, find kinetic energy when bullet hits um, the block this will give it this will be the total energy as there's no energy stored in the spring at that time okay so to find the kinetic energy we're going to need to know the velocity of this system at that point now it would be unreasonable to assume that all the kinetic energy from the bullet gets tra directly transferred to the block. It's going to lose energy in some form or another. But the rule of conservation of momentum should hold. So we can use conservation of momentum to find out the velocity of this block at that time. So find, let's call it capital V, the velocity of the bullet plus the block when it just starts to move. Okay, so in that case we have the initial momentum, little m, little v, is equal to the final momentum. So finally these are coalesced, so we've got little m plus big M times our big V here. So big V is equal to little m, little v over little m plus big M. Okay, so the kinetic energy is equal to a half now it's the bullet plus the block combined, so the, the mass is little m plus big M, then times big V squared, which is equal to a half little m plus big M. And now this is V, so we need to square it. That's m squared V squared over little m plus big M all squared. One of those will cancel with that. And so this is m squared V squared over 2m plus M. Okay, so now we've got the kinetic energy and we said that that was equal to the total energy at this time and so when that total energy is transferred into the spring, that's when we'll find our amplitude. So we have a half Ka squared is equal to m squared v squared over 2, little m plus big M. Our 2s will cancel out and we end up with A squared is equal to m squared v squared over k little m plus big m and so we're asked to find the amplitude take the square root we've got little m little v over the square root of k little m plus big m and that's our answer okay problem 14 which is a 1131 only problem in this problem we've got a cylinder 
It's attached by a, a spring to the wall. The spring, con the spring has a spring constant K is equal to 2.94 newtons per centimetre. Now the cylinder rolls without slipping along this surface. And when it's released, the string is stretched by an amount 23.9 centimetres. So that's how far it's extended from its equilibrium position. We're asked to find in part A the translational kinetic energy and B the rotational kinetic energy as it passes through its equilibrium position. Okay, so when it passes through x equals zero. When it passes through equilibrium, the velocity will equal v, the maximum velocity, as it's undergoing simple harmonic motion. So the total energy of the system is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And the kinetic energy has two forms, translational and rotational. Now initially, all the energy is in the form of potential energy as it's released from rest. It's not rotating and it's not moving backwards and forwards at all. So we can find this total energy. It's stored as potential energy and it's given by half kx squared, which is a half times k, which is 2.94. Now I need to times that by 10 to the minus 2, as this is in newtons per centimetre, and we need it newtons per metre, sorry, plus 2. It's larger in newtons per metre. And then times it by this x squared, which is 0 0.239 squared. Solving that on the calculator, we get 8.40 joules. So we've got the total energy there. Now at equilibrium, this energy is in the form of kinetic energy. So at equilibrium, we've got 8.40 is equal to the rotational plus the translational kinetic energy. So the rotational kinetic energy is given by a half i omega squared and the translation is given by a half mv squared. Okay, and this is a cylinder so i is equal to a half mr squared and v is equal to omega r telling us that omega is equal to v over r. Okay, so let's substitute in. We've got a half i is a half mr squared times v squared over r squared, those will cancel, plus a half mv squared. So this is a quarter mv squared plus a half mv squared, which is equal to three quarters mv squared. But basically the important point is that a third of this, this is the total energy here, which is equal to that, is stored as rotational and two thirds is stored as translational. So this will help us answer part A, which says how, what amount of energy is the translational kinetic energy? Well, it's two thirds of the total energy. So it's two thirds times 8.40. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with 5.60 joules. And then part B is asking us how much energy is in the form of rotational kinetic energy. Well, it's a third of the total energy, so it's one third times 8.40, which gives us 2.80 joules of energy. Part C, we're now asked to find the period if it's undergoing simple harmonic motion. So. Just to recap, here's our cylinder here. And so the spring is extended to distance x from the equilibrium. So the total force, the mass times the acceleration, is equal to, there's two forces acting on this cylinder here. We've got the spring force, the minus kx, and then we've also got friction along here. If there wasn't any friction, it wouldn't be rotating, but it is, so we need to take into account that friction, which is also going to oppose the motion. So Newton's second law tells us that we can write it this way. The total force is equal to these two forces acting here. Okay, so now we've got to try and work out what this frictional force is. 
So we know that torque is equal to I alpha, and we also know it's equal to the distance from the pivot point times the force. Okay, so I for this cylinder is given by a half mR squared. Alpha, the distance from the pivot point, that's the radius at which this is being applied, and the force which is being applied is this frictional force. That's what's causing it to rotate, the frictional force here. Okay, so we've got that the frictional force is equal to, these are the same R's, both capital or both little, um, it's a half M R alpha. And now here we've got a linear acceleration, here we've got an angular acceleration. The relationship between the two is alpha is equal to A over R. And so this is equal to a half M R, A over R, those will cancel, so a half M A. Okay, so substituting this back in here for this frictional force, we've got the total force is equal to minus Kx minus a half M A. Okay, let's solve this to get A. So we've got 3 over 2 M A is equal to minus Kx, so A is equal to 2 thirds x on m times the k. Okay, now if it's undergoing simple harmonic motion, we drop down the negative sign, this is equal to minus omega squared x. That's what simple harmonic motion is. And omega is equal to 2 pi on t. So omega from this equation is equal to the square root of 2 thirds k on m and then just rearranging this because we want t, t is equal to 2 pi on the omega so that's 2 pi root 3 m on 2 k. So that is the period for the simple harmonic motion. Okay problem 15 this is another 1131 only problem so in this problem, we've got a mass which is hung between two springs. The lower one has spring constant K2, the upper one has spring constant K1. Now we measure a distance x, which is how far from equilibrium it is. When we move the mass away from equilibrium, it's going to have a K1 x force pulling it back up towards equilibrium and k2x will also be acting upwards. They'll both be acting in the same direction to try and get it back into its equilibrium position. We do not actually need to consider this weight force because this weight force determines where the equilibrium position is. So it's effectively already been taken into account. Now we're asked to find the frequency of this system. So the total force acting on the system, which is MA, total force, is equal to, we've got the K1 X force and the K2 X force, and they act in the opposite direction to the extension. So that's minus K1 X minus K2 X. And so we've got our acceleration is equal to minus K1 X minus K2 X on M, which is equal to minus x on m k1 plus k2. Now we're told that it undergoes simple harmonic motion so we know that a is equal to minus omega squared x. This is the formula for simple harmonic motion. So we have omega squared is equal to k1 plus k2 on m and it, we are asked to find the frequency. So omega is equal to the square root of k1 plus k2 on m which is equal to 2 pi f. So the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k1 plus k2 on m. That's the answer. Okay, problem 12 for 1121 or the 16 for 1131. In this question, we have a transverse traveling wave. So y is equal to 0 0.1 sine pi of x minus 2.00t 
meters. And we're asked to find the, well, first of all, the amplitude. The amplitude that will be in the y direction, so that is equal to 0 0.1 meters. It's just the when sine of this is equal to 1, that gives us our amplitude. We then asked to find the frequency. The frequency, we know that 2 pi is equal to omega, which is 2 pi f, which tells us that f is equal to 1.0 hertz. That's just from this part with this pi. We're then asked to find the velocity and the wavelength. Let's find the wavelength first. So to find the wavelength, probably the best thing to do is to actually sketch out this wave. Here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis. We can choose any time, so let's choose t equals 0 and sketch this wave. So we've got y is equal to 0 0.1 sine, and then this is pi x. Okay, so when x is 0, we've got sine of 0, which is 0. When we've got pi on 2, sine is its maximum, so this is 0 0.1. We've got a point up there that's at a half. Then when sine's back to 1, we've got sine of pi, which is 0 again. When sine is, when x is 3 on 2, we've got sine of 3 pi on 2, which is minus 1, so this is minus 0 0.1 here because of this term. And then at 2, we're back up to 0. So we can see that the wave's going to look like this. And so the wavelength is going to be 2 meters. So lambda equal 2.0 meters. And we know that V is equal to F lambda. So that's the 1 times the 2. So that's 2.0 meters per second. OK, part B says find the maximum transverse speed. OK, so these particles are just moving upwards and downwards in the y direction with time. They're not actually traveling along with the wave. This is the wave velocity. What we need to do is find the particle velocity. So to do that, we'll need to take the derivative of their position in the y direction with time. So dy dt is equal to 0 0.1. Now, in front of the t, we've got 2 pi, so that's times 2 pi. And then we've got cos pi x minus 2 pi t, and that's in meters per second. So the maximum is when this is equal to 1. So this is equal to, we should have a negative out the front because there was a negative there. So the maximum is when this whole thing is equal to minus 1. And so that's equal to 0 0.1 times 2 pi is max. And solving that on the calculator, we end up with 0 0.63 meters per second. Problem 13 for 1121 or 17 for 1131. In this problem, we have a rope. It's got a length of 2.0 meters. It has a mass of 0 0.060 kilograms. And it has a tension applied to it of 500 newtons. And we're asked to find the velocity of a wave in the string. So it's fairly straightforward. The velocity is equal to the square root of the tension over the mass per unit length. The mass per unit length is equal to the mass over the length, which is 0 0.060 over 2. So that's just 0 0.030 kilograms per meter. So all we need to do is substitute in here. So this is 500 over 0 0.030. Solving that on the calculator, we end up with 129 meters per second. This is to two significant figures, so we should write this as 130 meters per second. And that's the end.